Hi, good day everyone. Our lecture today is focused on research, identity and conceptualization. And because of the bulky nature of the topic and what we need to learn, we decided to break it into three components. So we're going to have lecture one series where we'll discuss conceptualization and constructs. We're going to have lecture two series where we'll talk about research frameworks and measurements. And we're going to have lecture three series where we talk about research proposal guideline and structure. Now, there are basic things we must know before we go deep into lecture one series about conceptualization and research identity. What does it mean? It demonstrates that you have an understanding of the research in question. It's your clear plan of action of how you want to start from point A to point Z. Research conceptualization shows the purpose of the different components of the entire work, especially the purpose of literature, the considerations of literature, the different similarities and differences you see in literature, and the striking points. And it gives you the few points from which to do the inquiry and the procedure for gathering all possible information from all sources. Also, when we talk about conceptualization, a part of it relates to the research problem conceptualization, where it is a feedback derived from the theoretical framework, which supports the research methodology. In all, these processes could be complex, but the simple advice is that the conclusion should be made very simple and simple to comprehend. Now, talking points for the first lecture series, which is focused on the conceptualization and constructs, what are we going to be discussing? We're going to be looking at why the research, what should I expect doing the research, what should inform my choice of research design, what models of research should I incorporate, what are the different stages of research, what are the types of research, what kind of journey do we go through, what is conceptualization, what does it mean, how do we measure constructs and concepts, and how do we define our variables. So the basic focus for lecture one series, which is on conceptualization, is for us to learn the true meaning of research conceptualization and identity. Why the research? Three basic reasons why we must do this research. Number one is to convince other people. The second point is to show our expertise and competence in the designated field we have chosen. Number three, it could also serve as a contract between individuals. Or groups of people. What are the basic lessons to learn? What to expect in doing the research and the choice of a research design? In doing your research, there are basic things students must understand that we must be making mistakes while we learn. It's a period of writing and rewriting. It's a period you spend many hours on the materials, on the topic of interest. It's a period you are criticized by your peers and supervisors. It's also a period sometimes you feel disorganized and even depressed. Those things are allowed. Now, when we talk about the choice of a research design, what do we mean? We're looking at what design will incorporate and encapsulate and show clearly what we want to do. Whether we're going to do experiments, whether we're going to do a descriptive analysis, whether we're going to do a correlational study. This is what comes under the choice of a research design. Now, what are the stages of doing this research? First, we develop our concepts, our ideas. We operationalize these concepts. We select the methods. We look at our sampling frame or strategy. We also look at our data collection plan. We do the analysis. Then we do our results and writing up the entire thesis. But there's a point we must understand and consider. We must be looking at the timeline for completion as stipulated by the guidelines of the university and also the budgetary issues required to carry out the research within the possible shortest period of time. We have three types of research to look at. One is descriptive theory, the other one has to do with relational theories, and the other one is explanational theories. What do we mean by this? Descriptive tries to describe or classify specific dimensions, Relational theories specify relations between dimensions 
and explanatory theories move beyond the previous statement I made to the prediction of precise or causative relationships. In real life, the differences between descriptive analysis, relational theories, explanatory theories could be a bit complex. You have to be careful to know where your study falls under, whether it's descriptive, whether it's relational, whether it's explanatory. Now, the research journey, basically, we are looking at the three-year period for PhD on unless for master's degree. In the first year, you are looking at research conceptualization and preparation of your research proposal. The second year, you are looking at data collection and analysis. In the third year, you are looking at writing up your thesis and, consequently, submitting your thesis. So you can see from year one, you are busy with the conceptualization, the identification of the main themes of research, which enables you to develop a comprehensive and a precise processor, proposal. In the second year, you are busy with collection of data, sampling frames, and analysis. And as expected in the third year, you are writing up, getting ready for external examination. Now, concepts and constructs, what do we mean by that? The two words are related and have similar meanings that one has to be careful in trying to differentiate between the two. Concepts, they represent an idea that you are studying. Concepts represent collection of seemingly related observations and or experiences. Constructs, on the other hand, it's an idea and a general mental formulation summarizing specific occurrences. The basic point to know, when we are looking at concepts as constructs, we refer to concepts as constructs to recognize their social construction. So those two words could be used interchangeably, as far as we understand where the line draws. How do we measure concepts and constructs? How do we transfer concepts into measurements? An example of a concept is political participation. And what are the variables we'll be looking at? Voted or not? How many times a person has voted? What party a person votes for? Those are the variables we'll be looking under the concept called political participation. In measurement again, there are three classes of things we'll be looking at. Those that are directly observable, those we cannot observe directly, and the constructs. For example, the ones we can observe directly. Gender, the ones we cannot observe indirect, directly, income, or you're looking at a construct where you develop a dimension, an indicator of gender. Now, what does it mean? You now require much more than conceptualization. So, there are three classes of things that I mentioned that we can measure. Directly observable, indirectly observable, and constructs, depending on how you want to synthesize and rephrase the entire work. What is conceptualization? This process of conceptualization includes coming to some agreement about the meaning of the concept we've talked about. In practice, you move back and forth between those ideas, trying to understand what you're studying and searching for a word that describes it aptly. As you form the aspect of a concept in your thesis, you begin to see the dimensions. With each dimension, you must decide on indicators. Signs of the presence or absence of that dimensions. That is the whole story about conceptualization. You must come to some sort of agreement about the meaning of concepts that you want to measure. Variables definition. We have classified it into two, classification and types. Under classification, we'll be looking at qualitative variable or quantitative variable or continuous variable or discrete variable. Your research will have to deal with either it's qualitative, composed of categories, either it's quantitative, can be ordered with respect to magnitude, or continuous, which can be measured with an arbitrary degree of precision, or discrete, where values can differ only by well-defined steps. Now, on the types, you have independent variable, what is manipulated, and you have dependent variable, what is affected by the independent variable. And for independent variables, you could be looking at a factor, you could be looking at a treatment or program, or you could be looking at a explanatory variable. While on the de dependent variable side, you are looking at response variables, you are looking at measures, you are looking at effects or outcomes. 
Thank you very much. This is the end of slide one, lecture one series. Lecture two series or lecture three series will follow quickly. Thank you very much.